But we do want to begin this morning with that history that was made in the House of Representatives. On this vote, the yeas are 216, the nays are 210. The resolution is adopted. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. And just like that, last night, Congressman Kevin McCarthy ousted as House Speaker. That's the first time in history a speaker has been removed through a no-confidence vote. First time ever. The final tally, 216 to 210, with eight Republicans, you see them there, breaking from their party to oust McCarthy after a far-right Republican wow. congressman introduced the motion to remove McCarthy on Monday. After his ouster, the now former Speaker spoke to reporters about his removal. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. I do not regret negotiating. Our government is designed to find compromise. I may have lost a vote today, but as I walk out of this chamber, I feel fortunate to have served the American people. I leave the speakership with a sense of pride, accomplishment, and yes, optimism. I fought for what I believe in and I believe in this country of America. My goals have not changed. I believe I can continue to fight, maybe in a different manner. I will not run for speaker again. I'll have the conference pick somebody else. Pride, accomplishment, and optimism, says Kevin McCarthy. So now, Congressman Patrick McHenry of North Carolina becomes the speaker pro temp. McHenry was chosen from a list of potential successors that had been submitted by McCarthy back in January to the House clerk. He is an ally of McCarthy's. Since 2003, House rules have required the speaker to submit a list of names of members to act in the case of his or her vacancy. Republicans now will hold a speaker candidate forum next Tuesday for the candidate forward for the full house election next Wednesday. So a week from today is when they will vote for the next house speaker. So Joe, 270 days, nine months, Kevin McCarthy lasted. And this all goes back to something we talked about the day it happened. On that 15th vote, in order to become House Speaker, he had to agree to the rule that one member of the House of Representatives could raise a motion yeah. to vacate the chair. Yeah. A lot of people said, oh, that's never going to happen. We said, don't be so sure. And here we are today. The other thing to note, no matter how loyal you are to Donald Trump, no matter how you rush down to Mar-a-Lago to rehab his reputation after so January 6th, he ain't coming to save you in the end. Loyalty is a one-way street. Yeah, always been a one-way street, and 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 when when it really was a fait accompli, as soon as he agreed to yeah. one person being able, Kevin McCarthy, one person being able to knock him out. That's just bluntly. That's how we ran Newt Gingrich out of town at the end of 1998. Uh, but but it is amazing. It is amazing that the Republicans hold one branch of government, one branch of government, the, the House, half of a branch of government. And it's just absolute chaos, madness. And I must say, perhaps you file this one under letting calmer heads prevail. But to go on a one week reset, I'm sorry, you don't have your you know what yeah. together any better than that to go on a one week recess so they can get their thoughts together with everything that's going on in this country. I mean, Jonathan Lemire, uh, when they come back, you're still going to have 96 percent of the caucus enraged at the people who did this for really just weird, bizarre reasons. They don't line up. They can say what they want to say. They can talk about the budget. They're lying because they've never cared about the budget or spending before. They can talk about broken promises. I mean, so Wall Street Journal <laughs> said, you know, they're attacking McCarthy for not passing enough appropriation bills when they were the ones that stopped them from passing the appropriation bills. Here's the takeaway line, though. The ouster captures the degraded state of the Republican Party in this era of rage. That from the very conservative Wall Street Journal editorial page. 
who is throwing their hands up this morning, like most Republicans saying, what in the hell is going on in Washington, D.C. with Republicans? Yeah, it, it's so important that we say this is not the House of Representatives in chaos. This is the Republicans in the House in chaos chaos. And Democrats yesterday made the decision they weren't going to save McCarthy. They didn't appreciate how he badmouthed them in a series of TV interviews over the weekend after they came to his aid with a continuing resolution. He couldn't have passed it without them. We showed that t photograph he took with Donald Trump in January of 2021, just a couple weeks after January 6th, which started Trump's rehabilitation within the GOP. That was the one moment perhaps the party could have cut ties with him. We see now, of course, they did not. They're also angry about the impeachment inquiry uh, that McCarthy commissioned into President Biden. And McCarthy has been hanging by a thread for a while. Uh, Matt Gates and others wielded this threat, the easy move to call for a motion to vacate, vacate to get what they wanted from McCarthy, and it was never enough. Someone close to McCarthy yesterday told me it was like negotiating with terrorists, and there was never able to satisfy them. And there's pure fury within the GOP against Gates and others who've moved to vacate McCarthy, to oust McCarthy. McCarthy read the room last night, realized that he had no path to holding his speakership. There had been some thought he might fight to keep it even after the motion to vacate. He walked away. And now, Joe, the Republicans disappear. The House goes out of session for a week. We're only 40 odd days until the government runs out of funding again. Uh, so that just yeah. ups here the the drama and also just the disarray and chaos brought forth by Republicans. Well, John Heilman, somebody, uh, a source saying uh, to, to Jonathan Lemire, what, what many people have said is that they are like terrorists, but political terrorists, but political terrorists without any demands. I remember a question being asked, one of them, uh, uh, you know, when they said, what else do you want from Kevin McCarthy back when the first vote was going back in January? They said, well, we've really got nothing else to ask them. Yeah, it's their... They're just, again, the Wall Street Journal says members in safe seats. And that's the thing. All of these members are in safe seats. Members in safe seats can fuel their own fundraising and their careers to claiming to, quote, fight against all and sundry without doing any of the hard work to accomplish what they claim to be fighting for. We've been talking about how the Republican Party has been turned under Donald Trump into the party of gestures. This is the ultimate gesture shutting down the United States House of Representatives and sending out fundraising letters while you're doing it when you have no path forward, when 96% of the Republican conference is against you. And yet just 4% are able to shut down the House and then fundraise off of it. Right. And that's, you know, that's the sign of that. That's what's really, really puts a fine point on what's going on here, Joe. I mean, I have heard over the last 24 hours or however many hours it's been since McCarthy's fall, you know, the, the repeated invocation of the notion that this is a Republican civil war. This is not a Republican civil war. That's not this is not a, the moderate wing against the conservative wing or the establishment wing against the the the, the insurgent wing. This is a party that is is not uh, it's not because of the cleavages are so deep. There has been this kind of ideological inbreeding. This is an argument over tactics and what has happened over the course uh, and, and objectives and what's happened over the course of the, the takeover of the party by Donald Trump and the MAGA wing that has become the whole of the party is that all of these people who are so mad at Matt Gates and the other seven Republicans who voted to, 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 to send the House into this chaos and take down Kevin McCarthy, they have catered to that wing over and over and over again. They have never they have given it everything at once. And, you know, when you keep feeding the monster, the monster just gets stronger and hungrier and more and more ravenous and more willing to do what it's going to do for whatever reason. Kevin McCarthy didn't just lose because he made a deal with the devil. He showed Matt Gates back in February, January. He said, basically, I will do anything to be Speaker of the House. And the one thing, Joe, you know, is that when it comes to political power and leadership is that as soon as you can, as soon as you show the other side that you're willing to do anything, there's no line you won't cross. 
There's no principle you won't compromise, that you'll do anything to get the thing you want you know you will not have that thing for very long. And that is the, yeah. is the perfect symbol of what's happened with this entire ideological takeover. The party has capitulated to the Matt Gateses of the world and Donald, the, the progeny of Donald Trump, yeah, and now they are in their whole, they're in their thrall. Those, those yep. eight people who represent the, the, the most distilled Trump version have all the power, and it's bonkers. Yeah, it is really bonkers, is. and Willie, uh, John is so right. He wanted it too much. Yeah. You can't Desperately. ever want a position that much. You can't give away everything. You've set yourself up for failure. And it is one of the things I learned in Congress early on when some senior member wanted to appoint me to run a task force. And I had an aide look it over and said, well, you can't do this unless you're set up to succeed. They have you set up to fail. And it was a really great lesson. You don't run and jump at the first offer. You wait when that offer comes in. Know that you've got lesson. an ability to actually, you know, succeed at the tasks that you want to succeed at. Kevin McCarthy, we all knew it. Yeah. And we all said it in real time. Was so desperate to be Speaker of the House that he set himself up for failure. And boy, it melted down yesterday.